This presentation provides an overview of the Victorian Auditor General's report, Melbourne Metro Tunnel Project, Phase 1, Early Works. The Melbourne Metro Tunnel aims to increase capacity in the metropolitan train system and deliver twin 9km tunnels through Melbourne's central business district and five underground stations. The project should be completed in 2025. Patronage on Melbourne's metropolitan rail system has been increasing quickly and this growth is expected to continue. Future growth is forecast to be highest on the Cranbourne and Dandenong, Upfield, Werribee and Williamstown and Sunbury lines. We examined whether the Melbourne Metro tunnel planning processes and early works adequately prepared the project for the main tunnel and stations works. We audited six public sector agencies and one private sector associated entity. The agencies were the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning, DELWP, the Department of Premier and Cabinet, DPC, the Department of Transport, DOT, the Department of Treasury and Finance, DTF, Public Transport Victoria, PTV and VicTrack. The private sector associated entity was Yarra Trams, which is contracted to run Melbourne's tram network. We found that the planning processes and early works have adequately prepared the Melbourne Metro Tunnel project for its next phase, although at a greater cost and a longer time frame than originally approved and anticipated. DOT's business case did not meaningfully consider any other asset options other than a tunnel to address Melbourne's rail capacity challenges. We found that DOT should have better supported government decision making by presenting comparative analysis of alternative options, such as heavy investment in the existing overland rail corridor. Since the Metro Tunnel was planned, many new connected rail projects such as the Airport Rail Link and Suburban Rail Loop have been announced. DOT and other transport agencies now need to review the impact of these projects on the assumed outcomes and benefits of the Metro Tunnel and advise government of subsequent changes. We found the accuracy of some elements of the models used to forecast passenger demand to be uncertain due to their low sensitivity to change. This means that the models may not be able to accurately predict the future rate of patronage growth. We also found it was difficult to understand the rationale for some of the assumptions used for the forecasting models because these decisions were not well documented. DELWP's identification and management of key environmental risks was diligent and effective. The early construction works have experienced scope increases, some time delays and overall have cost more than expected. The increased costs mean there is a significant reduction in contingency funds for the rest of the project which presents a risk. We found good management by the audited agencies to ensure the quality of works and environmental management. We made 11 recommendations. Six were for DOT and relate to improving the use and construction of forecasting models, explicitly determining triggers for a future rollout of longer trains in the tunnel and publishing summaries of independent environmental auditor reports. We made three recommendations jointly for DPC, DTF and DOT. These relate to assessing the sufficiency of remaining contingency funds, updating the project's benefits management plan and sharing lessons learned from the project. We made one recommendation jointly for DPC and DTF to make sure agencies assess all viable and sensible options during business case development. The final recommendation is that DELWP should require projects that need to undergo an environment effects statement process to publish independent environmental auditor reports. 
For further information, please see the full report of this audit on our website, www.audit.vic.gov.au.